let's do something simple relatively simple and I think really good for beginners in blender all right this is a bookcase here with some nice hardware on it we're gonna uh, model this in blender and sort of grunge it up in substance painter or you can do it in blender if you prefer but I'm going to do it in substance painter and you can download this reference image I'll just uh, provide you the link in the description all right so to bring this in you're going to go shift a image reference and navigate to where you've got it and bring it in and let's go s2 and let's press three to look from the side and pull it back a little bit and then press one and we'll look front on this thing in the orthographic view and then let's press g with it selected and drag it something like this and we'll zoom in with our scroll wheel and press g and just try to get it lined up as close as you can to the center all right so we're going to start modeling this thing and should be okay to do so shift a mesh plane go into edit mode i'm going to press s to scale and just pull it out and you'll notice that i'm in vertex selection number one i can see my dots and it's i find it a little bit easier there i'm going to zoom right in and i'm going to deselect i'm going to select the reference image i may go into wireframe and I still see the line and I'm going to press G X and just slide it over a little bit to try and get it a bit more central select my plane again S to scale it's pretty good but I'm going to move this G X I'm going to hold shift pull it over just a little bit more go back to my plane all right so we're ready to go we're going to press E to extrude and pull up I'm still in wireframe mode. If I go to solid, you can see I've got a block like that. Now, how wide to make this? Let's take this and let's see. There's the side view. It doesn't have to be the exact width of this, so we could just eyeball it sort of, I think, now that I think about it. I'm gonna press SY and just scale it in and kind of look over here and say, okay, so imagine my bookcase goes up, something like that's probably okay. All right, so let's look at the perspective view. We come up to here, and then we go in, and we go up, we go in, we go up, and that's it. We can angle that if we want, but we don't need to. So let's select that top face. I press three to go into face selection, and we'll go back into wireframe, and I've got that top selected and I'm going to press one for vertex selection so I can see that and I'm going to press I to inset hold shift and pull and I'm watching the dots right here and it's doing it on all sides so we have that okay I'm gonna press E to extrude and come up to the next level which is there and it looks like I do have an angle here so we could do that let's go I'd inset pull it in again to about there and let's go E to extrude pull up to the top and let's press S to scale now and just angle it down like that you don't want to you want to have enough room for this piece to come on there so let's have a look at that so this is what we get okay so I'm going to go back into object mode 3 for face selection and select that face and we're going to delete that X Faces. we don't need that two for edge selection or just click there shift alt and click shift alt and click and we're going to round these shift alt and click all right now we're going to round this we don't need to follow the diagram for this part just control b to bevel hold shift pull there's two separations roll your mouse up so there's a total of three and that's good enough like that deselect all right shift alt and click that edge that edge and that edge all right I was holding shift and alt and I clicked all three I'm gonna bevel those again I'm not really using the diagram I'm just gonna do it by eye control B hold shift pull and I use the same three segments in there all right now we're going to also bevel these here and that will help with the shading control B pull just do something like that we can shade smooth and this is what we have 
let's make it look a little bit better by coming over here to the cavity shader turning that on and I think I'll turn on both and slide these up doesn't have to go all the way just makes it look a little bit more intense all right so we have our base let's make sure that it is facing the right way it's blue so turn that off we're good to go okay next let's do maybe the sides here okay the sides go all the way up on the side now how to do this well one easy way is to go into edit mode press 2 for edge selection and select an edge like that just in between the curve you don't want the curved part you just want the straight edge take that shift D pull it in a bit maybe pull it up a bit just to get it out of the way and P to break it out now I have just that piece we can go in the front view I'll go into edit mode and if you can't really see much let's see if you can in wireframe that nah, not really all right anyhow that's fine let's, let's just take that and start working with that so I'm going to I, I mean I see my circle but let's just start extruding it up so I'm gonna press E to extrude and pull up and we'll get the exact height once we give it some thickness we'll be able to see it better select it press E to extrude and come out the width of that approximately and then have a look at it and see where it's placed and you know that's not bad let's look over here let's look over here at this thing okay so we're doing this side piece and it kind of nestles right in there so yeah okay so let's look at that uh, what we're going to do is we won't need the bottom of this so let's in three face selection let's delete the bottom and we really won't need the top either because it'll be covered so let's delete that and then let's just look at this and decide where we want to position this I'm going to move it back a little bit I'm going to move it down GZ move it down because we got rid of that bottom face and something like that's not bad we can look at this and go into wireframe and just maybe I will position this a little bit more and then I'm going to I'll grab this face and I'll just pull it in a little bit more make give it a little bit more thickness like that to follow the diagram okay let's make it a little taller so I'm going to go into wireframe and deselect and box select up here and if I don't get anything because I'm in face selection switch to edge selection and just pull it up now you can go higher than this piece because it's going to fit underneath it so we have that okay we're going to want to bevel this but first let's mirror it my 3d cursor is right in the middle so I should be able to take this and mirror in the X and just look whoops on the diagram looks like everything lines up pretty good all right okay in terms of beveling we beveled this one manually we could try the bevel modifier keep the mirror modifier there let's go over to bevel and let's turn this up to three and this to 0 0.01 just a small amount now we have a bevel on there and it'll look a little bit nicer all right we have the side pieces we're going to do this piece and this piece next so might as well use this so let's come in here and let's just shift D to duplicate rotate Y 90 to get them like that All right, I'm gonna turn off the mirror take this piece and G drag it in and let's see we're gonna want this narrower and resting on there okay that's okay so let's do this let's go into wireframe and box select here and pull it like that something like that let's try this one box select pull it in here it's okay if there are a few little gaps it will look better I think if there is so you know you can adjust the exact you know length of these later 
Uh, let's just see. Okay, if I pull, put it down about there. If I rest it on the bottom, I could get rid of that bottom face. Although it's sometimes nice to have it, to have the bevel there so it looks like a piece of wood, but it depends how close you're going to get to it. So let me just look at this again. Let's, I'm going to come in and wireframe, deselect the box select the top, and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger like that. So I've got that piece and I'm going to shift D to duplicate and I'm going to pull it up and position it about there sort of trying to get it even with the top okay now we're really not going to see the back of this or it depends how you're going to use it and so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select that face and that face and X faces get to get rid of that face the sides are already gone but maybe we will okay let's change this select the reference image if you ever want to look at the back and that's in the way select this icon down here and on where it says side just click front now we can select through it I'm going to get rid of the back uh, that's mirrored so I'm going to get rid of that face and you know when we come to UV unwrap this then we won't have as much to deal with and you know Maybe we will practice getting rid of some of these faces. That one, because it's going to be covered. Uh, I'll leave this side here because there might be a little gap. I'll leave that. And so let's come now into uh, this one. I'm going to slash to focus on that. And maybe we will get rid of that face. And, you know, in substance painting, when I put dirt on that, that'll go into the crevices and stuff. So even if there's a little gap, it'll just look black like there's dirt. Okay. So we have that so far. Let's go on and do the top part next. And what I like to often do is come in here and take something that I can use to, to create that. So Shift D to duplicate, pull it up. Let's break it out though, P, separate by selection. And we now have that piece. I'll go into edit mode and I'm just gonna pull it down a little bit. It's gonna be about there. And I'm gonna press S to scale, hold shift. And I can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna do that. S to scale. Now I can see my dots. Pull it out to there. And let's see how that has done. Okay, a little bit hard to tell. It might be wider in the fronts and the back than on the sides. And so I'm going to uh, make that a bit more even by SY and just, you can hold shift or just pull it in. Do something like that. Let's start with that. Now, what I've realized is that this is actually an extra piece on there, although we could build it in. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to press E to extrude and pull up like that. I'm gonna go into wireframe I'm gonna press I to inset, hold shift and pull in just a little bit. And then maybe uh, scale a little bit, okay. E to extrude, pull all the way up to here. And we will deal with these pieces in a moment. E to extrude, pull up to here. And then S to scale. And then E to extrude one more time. Let's have a look at our work in solid. Okay, that's what we are getting. And then from there you can you can adjust the size of this. It looks like the overlap is pretty decent. So I think I'm gonna leave that. So let's now bevel this. Okay, it's got the bevel modifier on it, but I don't I don't think I want that. I want to do it myself. I'm gonna come in here though, and let's double check that it's facing the right way. Ah, some of it isn't. Okay, let's come back to this stuff. Select both of those. Go into edit mode, select it. Alt N, recalculate outside. Everything else is okay. Okay, back to that. Shut that off. So let's bevel this, like I said. Two for edge selection, Shift Alt and click these edges. And 
control B and pull, and I want three segments, something like that. And then for this one, I'm going to select the bottom edge, shift, alt, and click, shift, alt, and click that one. Let's bevel that. And I'll give it a nice bevel like that much. I'm also going to come in here and we're going to do the, the very top and this one, control B, pull, just do however much you want. This edge, control B. So far, so good. Uh, we probably may need to do that one, but uh, let's look from the front again in wireframe. We want to get these things done. So let's control R to drop an edge loop there. Control B, pull, roll back so you have just two. One going up and one going down. Get it to about there. Now this might be off the diagram a bit. Shift Alt and click this edge. I could actually pull that up right to about the middle. Shift Alt and click that one. So I've got both edges going all the way around. Okay. Now I'm going to Control B, pull until I get the width of those. Roll my mouse up one more and click. Deselect, I want this one and this one. Shift Alt and click those two and I'm going to press Alt S and bring them out like that. One more thing, Control B, pull with three edges just to give it some roundness. Something like that. Let's check it. Okay, not bad. Now, if we shade smooth, it'll look a little murky we could throw some more edge loops in there, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this edge and this edge, the extremity of the curve, and I'm going to bevel those. Control B, pull, but nice and tight with three. And that sharpens that up. And uh, we're okay on those. I might consider pulling this down, GZ, and just, whoops, not too much, hold shift just a little tighter and if you want to move this one you can't just pull it in the Z or you'll deform the whole thing you can press G and then G again and it'll slide up along its edges just to sharpen that up a little bit you know because it's going to be a piece of wood and you can look at doing the same for these you can press G G if you want pull that into the curve a bit more it's up to you Let's do that G G Okay, now my plan is maybe <laughs> to put a design on here, so that's why I did that. All right, let's uh, take that Alt N, recalculate outside, make sure. So we are doing good. We have the top piece there. Let's work on, we're going to need a back piece, but it's just going to be a plane. So why don't we come in here and take this? All right, it's already there. Why don't we? No, you know what? Even easier. Let's take just this edge. It's in the right place. Shift D to duplicate it. Pull it up. Get it out of the way. P to break it out. Go back into this. Pull it down to even behind that or lower. And then let's just go E to extrude. Pull up. Just make sure it's going to be the right width. We may have to just scale it out a little bit so that, you know, it's... Uh, we may even have to pull it in a little bit. All right? And you know what? Take this and pull it all the way down to the base. It might just look a little bit better. All right, take that and bring it up to cover. Put it into there. Now, the only thing is it may be flipped. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, it is. See? So go into it. Go Alt N and flip. And don't forget to save once in a while. All right. So we've got the sides, the top, the bottom and we need some doors on here so how to do that best well this piece would be a decent one to make the doors out of let's go into edit mode take that shift d to duplicate swing it right out in front p to break it out and then let's get this to be the approximate size of the doors so i'm going to go into wireframe and in edge selection select that and pull it down to about where the doors are Take the bottom one, pull it up to about where the bottom of the doors are. 
and so I've got this piece here. I'm going to drop an edge loop right in the middle and three for face selection, select that face and delete it. So I've got this. And this could potentially be my door. Bring it in there. We'll figure out the exact position in a bit. So if that's my door, I'll look in wireframe. I'm going to press I to inset and pull in until I get similar. I'm going to hold shift similar to that shape. I mean, I'll be a little bit off, but that's that's OK. Uh, let's just delete that face. I'm going to pull that out. So we're going to make the uh, thickness of the door now. OK, with that selected, press E to extrude and gesture backwards or use the uh, arrow and just give that a little bit of thickness. I'm going to X faces. We're not going to need the back faces. We're not going to see them. Um, yeah, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with that. And uh, uh, there is a little bit of a, a lip on here. I don't know how well you can see it there or there. Wasn't we? Let's going to do that anyhow. Let's do that. We're going to drop an edge loop right there. And I may pull that forward a little bit. So it's not too far in. That may be a bit too. I just don't need it halfway, maybe two thirds of the way. All right. We're going to make this extrude out. So press three for face selection, shift alt and click to get those. And we are going to press E and Alt S and we're either going to pull or push. I guess we're going to pull. And I'm not really looking at the diagram. I'm just doing something now. Now, I think that's a little far back. So I'm going to press Control Plus. That will expand my selection. So I've got all of this little inner ridge thing. And I'm going to move that forward in the Y. So I'm going to press G, Y, and I am going to move it forward like that. And it'll be a little bit more visible anyhow. So you can see that. So do we keep the bevel on here? We'll apply it eventually, or do we do it by hand? Well, one thing we can do is, for these corners, if I come down to the bevel modifier and I go to geometry, Meyer outer, I'm going to switch that. Watch the corners here. I'm going to switch this to arc, and that rounds them a bit. So I'm OK with keeping the bevel modifier. Uh, I'm going to take this door, and I'm going to slide it back in a little bit more, maybe not to its final position, just to get it. Uh, roughly where it's going to be and we're going to need to do these pieces here so how do you want to do that you want to bring in a new object or do you want to take one of these edges I press 2 for edge selection I know you can't see very well what I've got selected but I've got an edge how about we just take that shifty to duplicate pull it out get it roughly in the middle P to break it out so we have that and it's already roughly where we need it, just if we can select it. Right, let's look from the front, go in a wireframe, and GX to move it to about, uh, let's see, actually it's about there, because we're going to create a, uh, a design on this, sort of. E to extrude, pull out to about there. So I've got a solid piece like that. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's focus on that and that. So I held shift and I've selected that and that and slash key. And then I can select this and period key and we can just have that. All right, so I know you can't actually see what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to do it this way. So in edit mode, I'm going to control R to drop an edge loop right in the middle of that. Control B to bevel, split, roll back to zero. So I have just the two, and I'm going to come out to about so sort of equal. Now I'm going to extrude out in the uh, whatever direction, Y direction. And I'm going to, in three face selection, get rid of that face. And I'm going to come down here and get rid of that face. Now. I have the bevel modifier on and I'm not certain I want to use it, but there's a little bit more I want to do anyhow. I want to, uh, and if it's confusing, I'll just turn it off. Two for edge selection, select this edge and this edge, and I'm going to extrude them back a little bit in the Y. 
So I'm going to press E and G, Y and pull them back just to, so, so this whole thing's got some thickness. So let's have a look at this. Is that good enough? Let's shade smooth. It's reasonably nice. Um, I'm going to take this Alt N, recalculate outside. Sometimes it, it gets weird. I'm actually going to get rid of this. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to bevel it myself. So I'm going to Shift Alt and click these edges. And let's round this. Control B to bevel, pull. Press C for clamping so that it'll hit and not overlap and roll your mouse up to get a nice roundness there. It's a lot of polys, but we'll see what it looks like. Let's shift alt and click here and here. Control B and just to hold shift, I can probably come back to the, my three. Uh, it doesn't have to be too rounded. I just wanted something like that. Let's, uh, by the way, because we used clamp, there's some overlapping vertices. So select it all, press M, merge by distance, and look down here, we got rid of some. And the shading looks a little bit better. Let's start with that. Let's slash key to bring everything else back and look at this and see how well it fits. Okay, let's uh, GY and pull it back in. So it's sort of on the frame. And I think that's okay. Let's look from the front wireframe. And there it is. And by the way, it's everything's okay. Okay. And now we'll make the cross pieces. So we'll make it out of this one here. Uh, I'm going to, um, let's bring the 3D cursor. What's going on here? Cursor is selected. Okay. Looking from the front, let's shift D, rotate Y90. We can just scale in the X. And we just basically need it to go under scale in the X again. Under here, I can press G and just drag it. Let's just make sure that it goes in. And I want it to come back a little ways, like this maybe. And so it interacts. Now I just want to look at this. And um, I just want to see if I put it there. I'm not sure where I want to put it. And to be honest with you, I think these are a little thick. And so I'm going to scale in the Y and flatten them like that. Now, this one is attached. So I want to select a bit of this and Control L, P and break it out. And now I've got just that piece. And I'm just going to continue to look at how I want them to join. And I think I want it like that. So with that, then I'm going to go into wireframe and I'm just going to actually um, bring my 3D cursor. No, not there. Yeah, I'm going to bring my 3D cursor there and I'm just going to pull this up and we're going to array this down. So that's OK. Let, let's let's give it a try. Let's go back and have a look at this thing. Yeah, okay, let's 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 do it that way. Okay, back in a wireframe. I'm gonna add the array modifier in the Z. I'm gonna pull down. Uh see the way I'm in the Z and it's going weirdly. Let's zero out that. I need to control a apply all transforms. Uh, because I guess I did some editing in object mode. I'm gonna pull this down till it lines up and give it three. And that's actually not bad. Let's go back into solid view. And that's under. I'm just thinking about taking the whole thing and maybe moving it forward a little bit. Mm, sliding some glassing behind there. Okay. So, yeah, door. And this. All right. So I'm gonna join. I want to join some stuff. I just want to look and see. All right. Let's take this and apply the array. Join it to that one. It's always a good idea when you join stuff to go in and select it. I'll go and merge by distance in case you get rid of some stuff we didn't. But and I think my door has a bevel. This has a manual bevel. So I'm going to take this. And uh, so I'm about to join them. And uh, what am I going to do? Uh, let's apply that modifier. 
take that and control J. So it's all one piece now. All right, again, merge by distance is good. Ah, got rid of eight vertices, you see. Let's slide it in. I'm not gonna delete any faces from the door. I might swing it open or what, I'm not sure. And let's bring the 3D cursor back to the center uh, and we'll decide if we wanna do something else. So I, I'm just going to select something that I know is central like that. Shift S cursor to select it to bring my 3D cursor there. And um, there. That's right in the middle, good enough. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm going to mirror my door over. I'm gonna set the origin to the 3D cursor. And, uh, okay. I've now mirrored my door over. And it's possible that it needs to come down just a tiny bit, GZ. So there's sort of an equal gap at the top and the bottom. I don't. I want a little gap, all right? So it looks more realistic. So far, so good. Everything's looking all right. If you get some weird shading and you think it looks off a bit and you check it and the, the faces aren't flipped as these are, let's recalculate outside. Uh, and they're blue, then you can try this. Select it, go to modifiers, weighted normal, and also add normals auto smooth, watch it. And it changes a little bit and it looks better. So we will often need that. Okay, good. Don't forget to save. We are ready to do a little bit of hardware on this. Let's, let's do the lock. I mean, it's a big old clunky lock on this. I just thought it would be fun to model and good practice. So where's that gonna go? Roughly in the middle here. So let's come down in here and select something that can guide our, let me select that. Oh, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. All right, so we're gonna make this piece here, the clip-like part. So I'm going to bring in a plane. I'm gonna rotate X90. And let's push it out and scale it. And I guess we can go to wireframe and see where it is. Uh, I'm gonna press G, it doesn't have to be centered right now. I'm gonna do two of them, or one of them, and then mirror it. So I'm gonna bring that over to about there. And let's uh, have a look at this thing. Okay, let's take the whole thing and bring it back. And then we can, we can adjust the size of that. So let's look at this. now. It, uh, it goes like this and then it comes out, all right? So we've got this part, we need to make it come out as well. Uh, I could have done this with just one long piece. In fact, I think I'll do it this way. I'm gonna drag it out so that it's just about even on both sides. Then I can drop an edge loop right in the middle. I know that's right in the middle of that. With that there, I'm gonna shift S cursor to select it, bring my 3D cursor there and switch to my 3D cursor as my pivot. So I can take this edge right there, and I wanna move it uh, 90 degrees this way around the Z. So I'm gonna go RZ minus 90, and it'll rotate around the, th the, the 3D cursor. Now switch back to median point, don't forget that. All right, so I got that, and I want that piece. I want to round those like this. So I'm gonna bevel, so I've grabbed those edges. Now you can switch to one if you wanna see your vertices instead. I'm gonna press Shift, Control, B, and pull. And get a curve that you like. I usually, for a curve like this, would roll my mouse up and get five. Just do something like that. Okay. All right, I want to, in two edge selection, bevel this as well. It's a very sharp, uh, you know, angle. So control B, I'll pull. I could probably get away with three and just do something like that. Okay. Now let's take this and let's give it some thickness. Let's try solidify this time. Solidify, turn on even thickness. And then under the thickness, hold shift and just pull to the left. Make it a little narrower and think of it as a piece of metal. How thick, you know, is it going to be? You can see what I've done there. So, um, 
maybe let's try it. 0 0.0, 0 yeah I'll, I'll do that I'm going to apply that and sh and slash key to focus on this so this is what I have right there let's double check that no faces are okay I want to bevel the edges now of this two for edge selection shift alt and click and as I do that there will be areas that I miss so I'm going to shift alt and click that so it's orange in my case all the way around so don't forget the curve part there coming around there it's all selected all the outside edges and now I'm going to control B and pull and I only need three in there something like that and shade smooth there's a little bit of weird shading going on but we're going to fix that later all right with that done uh, we're going to punch a hole in this I can bring that back and uh, let's actually check the size of this uh, where is it okay let's come over here yeah okay hang on a second here uh, I'm just gonna scale this down globally and put it we'll put it around there and then we'll figure out if it needs to slide over it probably actually will uh, and we'll shade smooth the doors in a bit it's gonna go roughly like that and yeah let's make a hole in that now okay so for this part i'm just going to uh, isolate that with the slash key three to look from the side and shift a mesh cylinder um the more points you have the smoother i'm going to go for 24. it's relatively smooth and it's does it i have to use 32. take that rotate y 90 and then just position it where you think you want your hole. In fact, something like that's not too bad at all. Okay, it might be bigger than in the diagram, but we'll go with that. Select this piece and we're going to add Boolean. Leave all the defaults and just with the eyedropper, select that. Don't freak out because of the coloration. And click apply, delete that. And then we're going to come in here in edit mode and we're going to bevel this circle. So shift alt and click in edge selection, shift alt and click. If any of these are selected, make sure they're not. Deselect them, shift alt and click, and then get yourself a vantage point to look at this. Control B, pull. Sometimes I do more than three here. I might do four and shade smooth. And it's pretty good. Of course, we can add that weighted normal and normal's auto smooth. And it looks just fine, all right? That's a rather large hole for what we're doing, but all right, anyhow. Uh, let's make sure it's actually making contact with the surface of the door there. Let's try shade smoothing the door. Um, it looks a little bubbly. I don't know if that's the right word. Discolored and bendy, and that's, you know, we're going to need this weighted normal and normal's auto smooth and that's going to clear that right up okay so we have this are we able to just mirror this right across to the other side we seem to be able to do i want to hold that big uh, you know what it's such a small device that I'm barely going to see it so all right let's let's add a bolt of some sort to this and I got my 3D cursor right there, so let's just bring in a circle. Let's make this 16 vertices. It doesn't have to be too high. Scale it down. I have to make a face. Rotate X90. Scale it down. Get yourself a bolt that you like. I'll go in a wireframe and see. It's hard to see, so I'm just going to do whatever. And then extrude it back and delete that back face. Select this face and Control B and have three pull it in and if you want to get fancy you can take this you can I to inset do that and you can push that in and you can control one to give it one subdivision but we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work select this face I to inset pull it in maybe drag an edge loop down like that and you can have a bolt like this I think it looks a little bit too big. I'm going to scale it down. Uh, because I scaled it down, I might want to scale it in the Y, make it a bit thicker. And it's there. All right. And this is mirrored. So what I'll do is I'll take this. 
I'm going to join it, but this has a subdivision on it. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and apply the subdivision. That'll give me this pattern in the middle, with, uh, which I generally don't like, although it's fine. Blender likes it, but I don't. I'm just going to have to make a face in there. And I'm going to take this and this, and I'm going to control J. And I'm going to have it on the other side. So I don't know if you like those bolts or not. All right, let's go on and do the lock. And uh, yeah, all right, how close to the diagram are we? Oh, we're pretty good. All right, my 3D cursor is right there. So let's do this. Um, how to make a circle or half a circle. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to use a plane. I'm going to scale it down. This may take more steps than you need, but. I'm going to do it this way anyhow. I'm going to scale it to the approximate size and, and position like that. And uh, all I really need is uh, the top. I can get rid of this edge, get rid of that edge, and take this one. And I'm going to shift control B and pull and see if they overlap. No, they don't because I have clamping on. And if they do, I'll turn it off. And they go like that. Just press C and then do that. And then roll your mouse up a bunch of times like that, get it nice and smooth. Select it again though, don't forget, merge by distance because you used clamp. And I'm gonna convert that to a curve. So I'm just gonna right click, convert to curve, and then use the curve dialog box under geometry and bevel depth and just pull it and get that thickness that, that you like for this. Oh yeah, and have it go through the holes. Oh, those holes are big, I might make those smaller later. I'll shade smooth for the moment. All right, let's make the let's make the actual lock, and then I'll decide how long this has to be and all that. All right, 3D cursor still there, so that's good. Let's bring in a circle, and the circle is going to be six vertices this time. And scale it down. Let's extrude down and start messing with this and seeing what we got to do. Okay, so this is what we got. I'm going to make it a bit longer. Uh, just pull it out. So I'm going to scale this in the Y to flatten it. It'll start looking a bit more like I'll combinate, like a key lock, right? All right, let's go back in the wireframe. Pull that down. You can just scale it. Okay, box select those. Pull it up to about where the top of the lock is supposed to be. And you can just have to fill that. Shift, Alt, and click those have to fill that uh, and we're going to select both of those top and bottom and bevel by hand with just three so there's two three and then I'm going to shift alt and click all these edges going around and I'm going to bevel them as well with three and then I'll smooth it out we'll shade smooth in a moment let's pull it back okay make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to take this curve thing here and I'm going to reduce that a little bit now, was that too much and I can if I scale it in the X just a little bit I might like it a bit more okay yeah okay I'm gonna make those holes smaller that's fine uh, I'm going to convert this to a mesh because it's a curve. Let's try a resolution of three. That's fine. And then right click, convert to mesh, done. And I can take the two of those and join them with my lock. And I can shade smooth. And if it looks a little shadowy and weird, just first of all, double check that it's facing the right way and it's not. Go in, recalculate outside. But that's not going to solve it all. I'm going to end up putting on this modifier weighted normal and normals auto smooth and that's gonna look better and yeah all right let's 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 do something about this all right so come in here and three face selection shift alt to click there and then control plus until you get to the edge of the circle I want to scale this but not in the X direction so I'm going to scale shift X and pull and do something like that it doesn't have to be tiny Something like that, and then take the whole lock and then generally you know pull it down like that. So it might be off the diagram a little bit, but that's that's the general idea. Let's save that. Let's double check everybody. Turn that off once in a while. Maybe switch to a different mat cap. Uh, you know, so just to improve the view for while we're doing this. 
Okay, make sure, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it's not poking into anything. So far, so good. Let's save and let's just carry on. Um, I think we'll maybe we'll do, uh, what should we do? Let's do the hinges next. All right, just a very simple thing for the hinge. 3D cursors down there, that's okay. Let's go into wireframe. Let's start by bringing in a plane. Rotate X 90 and scale it and just sort of drag it up to the general vicinity. You can press the period key. Okay, so sorry if it's a little blurry there. I'm just gonna scale it down. I'm just trying to get the extent of this and I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna grab uh, this edge and pull it out. We'll mirror this sort of to about there. I can't tell exactly where the door ends. So I'm going to do something like that. And then I'm going to drop an edge loop there and control B and pull. I just want to, and I want to do this and I'm going to drop another edge loop there. And then I'm going to select these edges and get rid of them, these edges and get rid of them. And uh, can I uh, get rid of any of these edges? Yes, I can. That's what I basically wanted to do. Okay. Um, I don't need these vertices. We're going to dissolve those vertices. And I want to bevel some of these edges. I want to bevel all of them or these vertices. I'm going to select those ones. We'll do these ones a little different because I want these a bit more round. So with those one, two, three, four, five, six, Shift Control B, pull, and do something like that. Three. Let's try to go with three. Okay, so I get this nice curve. These ones, I just wanted them to do them separately. Shift Control B. I just don't want as much of a curve. I just want a little bit. And I got that. F to make a face. All right, let's make this a solid piece. Nice big end gone there. Extrude it back and delete those faces. It's flipped. Alt N, recalculate outside. Good. Let's just bevel this. Shift Alt and click there. And we'll bevel this. Control B. I just need three. Come in. Shade smooth. Deal with shading in a bit, actually. Is there anything else on that? No, it's just like that. Eh? Okay. Now, one thing you can do is you can select that face. And if you're careful, you can go I to inset and just pull in. Just make sure you're not overlapping anything. And that'll generally solve that. Okay, uh, it's a little bit thick, but we'll go with that. And let's see uh, how to mirror this. Well, what I'll do is this. I'm going to select the innermost side. Shift S cursor to select it. Select the whole thing again and just pull it out away from that 3D cursor a little bit. Set the origin to the 3D cursor and then mirror. All right, and um, it's not necessarily in the right place. Let's shade smooth that side. And I'll probably have to throw on because, especially because I have a bevel. I'm gonna put on that weight to normal and normal's auto smooth. And let's just have a look at this. Uh, it's not bad. It, oh, in object mode, I can move it like that. Yeah, that's fine. Anyhow, okay, let's do the cylinder. Uh, actually, let's have a look at it here. Uh, okay, <laughs> a little bit off. That's that's part of part of life. Is that gonna be okay? I think it's gonna be okay. So let's now bring in a cylinder, and I'll go for something like sixteen vertices. Is probably fine. Scale it down. Uh, a little bit hard to tell from the diagram, so I'll just do something like that. Scale in the Z. I'm going to make it close to the same size, maybe about that. All right. And then I'm going to select the top and the bottom. And let's bevel that with three, just like that. And then we'll come in here and we'll add, let's say, two edge loops like that. And how about we select those edges? Control B, pull, roll back to two, and then E and Alt S and pull just to bring those in. So it looks like it's got some parts to it. And then we need to bevel. Shift Alt to click this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. And just zoom in a bit. Control B, hold Shift, pull, there's two, three. 
and we probably need to slide an edge loop up and down for shading purposes and up and down and shade smooth and it's not quite done yet but now I just want to have a look at the hinge oh I should have looked at that over here and worked on it there ah didn't think of that for some reason um yeah okay that's all right and let's maybe scale uh shift z just make it a little narrower it's okay so far so this has a mirror on it so let's i'm going to apply that mirror and i'm going to join that and you could delete the back half Let's put some bolts on it and get it to look decent. Let's grab these bolts, pull this up here. Let's split this out of where it was. So let's go P to break it out. Take that, scale it down. We'll have to pull it up, period key to focus on that. Let's pull that out. And I really can't use that very much. You can, I can come over here and look at it over here periodically. It's just like that. Okay, let's just put some bolts on this. Not always worry about the reference image too much. I'm gonna flatten this though, scale that in the Y for this particular type. So I'm gonna do that. And I think I will shift D to duplicate it. I'll do that. And then I'm just gonna do this by I, shift D drag them down I haven't affected that have I? okay good all right so I'm going to take that and that has a mirror on it I'm going to apply that and I'm just going to join that I'm going to come in here merge by distance and I got rid of some extra vertices I think I had an extra mirror on there um, let's add that way to normal and normal's auto smooth to clean that up and there's our there's our hinge. I mean, maybe this is a bit thick. I don't know. You can decide uh, if you think so. Uh, let's bring the, let's mirror this around. Let's select something central. Shift S, cursor to selected to bring my cursor right back there. And let's set the origin to the 3D cursor and mirror this guy over to the other side. There we go. Uh, we got that mirrored and let's add an array. In the Z, we'll just drag it zero this out and we can look in wireframe and just keep pulling it until it's roughly where it's supposed to be uh, down there am I in the wrong position I'm not looking in the front that's why uh, okay about there and I'll make it three and we'll go down to there close enough uh, let's see that okay all right I'm gonna apply the array I won't apply the mirror yet. Okay. One thing that I forgot to do on the sides is maybe a little bit of an inset. So I could come in here and select that and just press I to inset a certain amount like that. And then just gesture in, extrude in like that. And now I have that. Now you don't want to go, don't do too much. And again, if I'm gonna have wood on this, it can look kind of weird. So I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit. And I wanna check my bevel and geometry. And I might want to switch this to miter. There, like that. All right, so that gives us that indent. Save that. A Couple more things to go and we are Done. I mean, you know, we got glass and books and stuff like that. Let's just do some kind of design on there. So we got my 3D cursor there. Okay, let's bring in a curved circle. Scale it down. Rotate X90. Wireframe. Move it down. I can just actually grab it. G to grab it and just do that. And let's see, uh, I'm going to select those and I'm gonna scale in the Z just to get the approximate size. Get that in there. 
yeah, this is really a simple design. Just take those and scale in the X to do something like this. You just need to make sure, actually, let's do a little bit narrower. You just need to make sure that it's going to fit on your door. So let's pull that out and see. Yeah, that'll fit on my door. Okay. How's that? Something simple like that? Could do that. All right. So in that case, let's come over to the curves and let's try resolution four. So I'm going to lose too much. Put a subdivision on this. Uh, let's convert that to a mesh. Come in here. F to make face. Um, let's give it some thickness back and delete that back face and take this we'll, we'll get it smoother in just a moment let's i to inset pull in hold shift and what i really want let's see how do i want to do this uh what did i do here right. um i guess i did that and i guess i uh inset one more time just a thin one and then three for face selection, grab those and just extrude them back. And let's go ahead and put on uh, subdivision. I'll, I'll end up going for two on this one. And we'll have that. There's no back, that's good. Okay, we're gonna need, I'm gonna bring an edge loop up just to sharpen that. That's okay, like that. Okay, and that's going to come back onto there okay let's try a mirror so there's two of them oh yeah and let's actually look at the reference all right can I get them any bigger all right close enough um, Yeah, you gotta be careful at the details. I'm going to I to inset again and just pull that. The details get too small, you lose, you start losing them. But anyways, those are just going to be in the background anyhow. And then this is the question of doing these guys here. Uh, and uh, I think what I'll do is um, I'm done with the reference image like that. I'm actually going to move this in here so it's closer and, and uh, I'm gonna uh, scale it down and I'll end up zooming in but just to get a little bit closer I'm just messing around now a little bit more yes close enough for that and uh, where's my 3d cursor right there right all right so for this um, I kind of don't don't want to look at those Kind of distracted me. All right, so let's bring in a circle. Am I in something? No, whatever. Scale it down. Oh, how am I? No, let's not do that. Let's bring in a circle and make it 12. How many? 18. 18 vertices. Bring it up, and we're going to use that to roughly do it, okay, like that kind of thing. Now let's rotate X90, and uh, you know what? Let's bring it back here and focus just on that and that. And yeah, okay, so we got that and we got that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, extrude forward a bit. Let's get, well, I don't need to be in that like that. And it's already flipped. Recalculate. Okay, and I'm going to make that. Now I'm going to E and S, and I'm going to pull in a little bit. I'm coming up to that sort of edge. And now I want to make the next level, so I'm going to press E. I'm going to come out a little bit. And E and S, and I'm going to come in. So I'm now looking at this middle part here. Okay, we're going to come up a little bit. That's this one here. And uh, in, I guess, a little bit. Second last one, come out a little bit, in, and then it's the central thing. And this may be a little bit off in terms of the uh, the diagram. 
have to make a face. Three. Control B, pull all the way back. In fact, you can do this in clamp and roll your mouse up like that. Get a nice round piece. We'll have to take it, merge my distance just to see. And then I want a nice smooth curve. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do these one at a time and I'm gonna do big, not, I, don't have, I don't need to use lots, you know, something like that, that's, that's fine. Just big bevels big bevels and if you're concerned you got clamping on no problem do that take this one it's a little bit smaller and I probably could get away with three because I'll probably put a subdivision on this one do it like that let's take the whole thing merge by distance didn't get rid of anything control one and uh, it looks a little bit different okay is there anything let's turn that off maybe what I could do is just widen this a little bit I'm going to control plus, uh, not those. Scale shift Y. Just pull that out a bit more. And let's have a look at that. That looks a little bit better. I'm going to drop one edge loop in there, not too tight. Okay, and let's just finish this off at the back. Let's shift alt and click. Uh, oh no, it gets a bit confusing. An edge here. Okay, E and S come in like that and then E, come back, and then maybe come out like that a little bit and back. Oh, not that much. Just for where it joins, and that may be too, too long. Just a little bit of a bevel there. Take this, bevel it a little bit. I'm gonna need that. We'll add our subdivision back on. And there's our handle. You can see that I do need another edge loop there. That's probably enough. Okay, let's slash, bring everything back. Let's take that knob and bring it forward. And, um, what, there they, oh, there they are. And let's, uh, uh, oh yeah, I moved, I moved the diagram. So I'm just going to do this by eye, roughly in the middle and push that on. No, yeah, by moving the reference, but I'll line it up. I think that pro looks probably okay. Something like that. And uh, the 3D cursor is there, so I should be able to mirror that. Okay, I'm really crazy about these butterfly wing things, but, uh, and then what's what else is on there? Just some bolts, right? All right, so we'll grab them from here, why not? Look from the front, shift D to duplicate and pull up. I'll split them out, P to break them out. And I lost them, so where are you? Hide those, there you are. Okay, come up, come up, come up where we are. Alt H, bring that back. All right, let's try this. You can even try the same size and see how it's going. Okay, that's okay. And um, just to get it roughly in the center, maybe there. Shift D to duplicate, pull them up like that. Yeah, all right. Let's uh, apply that. Uh, so what do we got? Is that, that's got a subdivision. I'm gonna apply that subdivision. Um, It's okay, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm going to join that and I'm going to apply that subdivision and I'm going to join that. I'm gonna come into everything, merge by distance. No, okay. And there is my stuff. I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm just gonna wrap this up by making a couple of shelves. Coming in here, taking this piece here, Shift D to duplicate, pull it up, P to break it out. Come in here, I don't want it to stick out that far, so I'm gonna grab that edge and I'm gonna pull it back to about something like that. All right, and let's see where you are. There you are, I'm going to extrude you up and make you about the same thickness, I don't need that, as this. 
I'm going to recalculate outside. Let's focus on that. I don't need the back on this or the sides. This has the bevel on it from the other piece, so that's okay. I just want to make sure that that doesn't even matter if it's stuck out. But I just want to make sure that it's wide enough to touch the sides. So I got that. And I can use an array if I like. And I'll come up in the Z. Okay, so I need to apply my rotation and scale. And I'll just come up to about there. We'll turn off the X. And we can have, say, three of those. So we got some shelves in there. And then you can just decide if you like that position or if you want to move them down a little bit, whatever. Okay, and to do a real quick book, and then we'll we'll end it. I'll come back and we'll touch this up. And uh, yeah, to do a real quick book, we can do we can grab this again. Shift D to duplicate. I'm gonna pull it out. P to break it out. And let's see. Let's scale this in the X and scale it globally. I'm just gonna extrude it up, make it start to look like a book. I'm going to grab this face and no, I'm going to grab this edge and this edge and I'm going to control B and I'm going to roll up a few times, maybe something like that. Face selection, select that face, that face, and that face. Press I to inset, pull it in like that. E and Alt S and pull and sort of look there. That's all I'm going to do for the moment, except it's a little bit too tall. Take it like that. All right, let's rotate X minus 90, or 90, either one. <laughs> rotate Z 90, like that. Okay. okay, let's see how this is going to work. Okay, gee, let's just drag it in there. You can scale it. I'll drop that down about there uh, we can shade smooth we can add on weight in normal and normals auto smooth. I mean I'm not done with this book how I would do this book but just to get something in here for you we could do that and then we could take this let's uh, apply rotation and scale and just array this we'd be done with that and just give it a little bit more space and then just Hold down shift and just give a bunch of of them there like that so, so you know it's a bookcase and uh actually i'm gonna have this here just like the reference ones. So i'll duplicate that out put them there mm, do they hit the ceiling or not i don't know think about that later but that gives you that and are we flipped no we're good we don't have any glass on there we may not need it right now but there's our bookcase let's make sure we're saving and if you don't want to render this thing you could really just do this you could come over here switch to object whether you're on a matte cap or not and then just come over here and down to viewport display and change this to a, a color that you like like I'll do that. I'm going to switch this to that and maybe make it look a little bit like wood or or not wood. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. And then I'm going to take this, go to the hex, and I'm going to copy that, control C. And I have to individually put it on all these pieces. So I'm just going to do that. I'll try to do that kind of quick. And you, it can look kind of nice too. And then you can just take a screenshot of that. Uh, instead of instead of rendering it, so want that stuff in sort sort of brown. It may not look like wood to you, but stylized, whatever. Okay, and this one at the back. Okay, and then I'll make I'm gonna make this stuff in sort of black. It doesn't have to be too dark, but like that sort of. So I'm gonna copy that. Control C. Put that on this stuff. The lock. Okay, good, good. 
And maybe for the books, we'll just go for like a red kind of color. Uh, yeah, or th these ones could be different. These ones could be, uh, you know, yeah, sure. I know they're all the same, but. There might be a couple places where I would need to put on that uh, weighted normals and normals auto smooth, but that basically gives you that. I'll show you one last thing, and that is if you really had to put glass in here uh, and you wanted to do it this way, if I selected that whole edge, Shift D to duplicate, P to break it out, make sure you can get it again. That's just to hide the doors from the wall. There it is, that thing. I'm going to have to make a face. And um, what am I doing? Alt H, bring that back. Okay, so that's the glass. Let's come back to here and make this a green or a blue color. And then just take the alpha and lower it down. And it sort of looks like glass, a little bit like glass. In the viewport. Okay, so we've done it. For now, I mean, if we're going to texture this in another way, we're going to have to do some more work. We're going to delete more faces, check, you know, merge all vertices, and clean up a little bit of the topology here and there. But that is basically what we've got. And honestly, I would be fine with taking a, a, a couple of screenshots of that and moving on to something else. You don't have to texture everything unless you really want to. Okay. Cool. So I will come back and texture it though. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.